Well, daily boiler maintenance is something that you want to make sure that you're doing or you're going to be cutting tubes for your boiler that fails. We're going to go back in an old episode of Boiling Point on daily boiler maintenance where we talk to Mike Taylor and get a little bit of insight on making sure that we're doing our daily boiler maintenance. Welcome to The Boiling Point. We're here with 36-year veteran Michael Taylor. Uh, Michael's actually in our uh, safety department and heads all of the safety department of where, but more importantly, he's last word technically uh, in the business. So 36 years in the business, got a lot of knowledge, and so really, I can't believe I haven't had you on The, uh, the Boiling Point yet. So uh, glad that you're finally with us. Glad so. to be here. Hey, uh, what we're talking about today is we're going to talk a little bit about daily maintenance um, of the boiler and taking care of the boiler. And we thought we'd go through a checklist of things that you could do on a daily basis. So, Michael, the first thing I believe that we would do is uh, look a little bit about the blowdowns. Yeah, the, the biggest point is the, the main blowdown to get all the solids out of the boiler that's accumulated in there. Okay, how do those solids actually get to the bottom blowdown? Uh, they're, they're heavier than the water, so they're going to fall to the bottom. And the chemical in the boiler actually keeps it from attaching to the tubes and the other materials so they can drop and you can blow them out. Okay, so this is a daily thing that should be done once you go through that process real quick for us. Okay, on the main blowdown, you, you're going to have a quick opening and a slow opening on most boilers. You always open the quick opening first. It's just a backup. You don't want to open it last. You want to open the slow opening so that you don't stress the pipes and stuff and blow them off. So you open the valve up all the way and depending on how long your chemical guy tells you to blow it, then you close it back down. Typically it's going to be a 10 second blow. Okay. And then shut your secondary valve back off. All right, we've moved to the front of the boiler and now we're going to be doing the water columns. Michael, first of all, what is the water column for? It's to control the level of the water in the boiler and to prevent the boiler from going out on low water. So it, it has switches in it that will shut the burner off if the water gets too low. Okay, so what are we gonna do on a daily maintenance on, on this? Well, this, you have sediment will settle in this bowl just like it does in the bottom of the boiler. So if you let it too much build in there, then the, the float or the probes in this case will not detect low water conditions. So you have to blow that column down to blow all that sediment out. And on, on this one, it's a probe, so it doesn't matter how quickly you do it, but if you've got a, a float in there, you have to do it very slowly or you'll collapse your float. So you simply open the valve up all the way. And by the time you get it open, it's blown out, so then you close it back down. Okay, so it's not a 10 second here. No, you no, just, just open it up open and close and it back down. Okay. And when you do that, the boiler, the burner should shut down because it's going to drop the water off that switch. If it doesn't shut down, there's something wrong. You need to shut it down and see what's wrong with it. Well, having data is always important. And this next thing that we're going to do is um, something that's also important. Tell us a little bit about the boiler pressure. Well, you're, Depending on your process, you're going to have a certain set point on your boiler pressure and the boiler, it's going to fluctuate some depending on your load. So you always want to check your, your pressure when you're at a steady load rate, not when it's, you've got a big load surge or it's backed way off. Whenever it's a steady load, check to make sure that your boiler is maintaining the pressure. And is this something that you would actually write down daily? Sure, you should have a, a daily log book that you would write that down. A lot of places, they'll, they'll record that every hour. And what would you use that information for? Just to see what your load is being on your board to make sure that your boiler is big enough and also to make sure that if your load hasn't changed that your boiler is working properly. Well, we've moved back to the back of the boiler again and the stack seems to be something that uh, is really, really important to kind of understand. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the stack? Well, the stack will, in stack temperature, will tell you what's going on inside the boiler because scale is a great insulator, soot is a great insulator. Either one of them is going to cut down the efficiency and allow more heat to go out to your stack. Okay. So if you check your stack temperature daily, the stack temperature should always be 
between 50 and 100 degrees above your steam temperature. Okay. So if you've got 325 degree steam temperature at 125 PSI, then your stack's going to be between 375 and 425. If it gets out of that, it starts rising, you know something's going haywire inside the bore. Okay, and typically when that stack temperature is going up, a lot of times it is a suet uh, problem or maybe a scaling problem, something like that. It's going right? to be one or the other, either a suet or a scaling, and either one makes it, well, really inefficient because you're sending more heat out instead of transferring it to your steam. Okay. All right, well, we've moved to the fuel side of things, and uh, what do we do with gas here, Mike? Well, you got your gas regulator, which is regulating your gas going to the burner, so it's real important that you check to make sure that you're, you got a good gas supply to it and that your regulator is working with the gauge after the regulator. If it stops working, then your gas switches should check it, but it's a good daily log to log those pressures to make sure everything is we're supposed to be. Okay, now that's gas, now what about oil? With oil, you have a, an oil filter and you have a vacuum gauge between the pump and the filter and that vacuum gauge will tell you that the filter is getting stopped, when the filter is getting stopped up. Okay. So as the, the gauge rises in vacuum, you know that you need to change your filter out. Okay, so no fuel, probably hard for the burner to work. Yes, very hard. <laughs> Well, we come back to the back of the boiler again, and we're actually going to look into the uh, sight port for looking at the flame. Now, I remember as a little kid, I'd be hanging out with my dad, and I'd always go into the boiler room, and I always felt like a big boiler man because I could look into the sight port. So I still don't know what I'm looking at, Mike. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what, what are we looking for in here? Well, we're looking for, to make sure that the flame stays like it always is. Every boiler is different. but you'll get used to what the flame looks like, so then when something goes haywire, like the diffuser or something on the burner head, you'll know it because you've been looking in there every day and you say, hey, something's changed. Mm -hmm. So then you'll know to call somebody or to check into something. And you can also look and see if you're building up clinkers or anything because you can see the Morrison tube when you look in there with the flame in it. Mm -hmm. You can see all that area, so you can see if something is building up in there and causing a problem. Okay, why don't, why don't you uh, explain flame impingement, what that actually Flame means. impingement means that you've, your flame is actually, instead of going straight down the tube, it's veering to one side or up or down and really hitting on the metal hard and then it won't allow it to burn. Mm -hmm. So it'll start building up carbon, which is unburnt fuel, and what we call in the boiler industry is a dead man. Mm. And, and it'll, it can get, pretty big in there and actually start closing off the area. So, and the more that grows, the more impingement you have, so the worse it gets. Okay, so something really important that this needs to become uh, something that you're just very familiar with your flame. It's just understanding that it's just right. kind of like and it's just, your body. Knowing you just what it is. look through that every day or several times a day and you get accustomed to what it's supposed to look like. And as soon as something changes, you know it right off the bat because you're used to seeing it. Well, obviously the boiler is something that's important and we should really look at, but man, there's a lot of support equipment that goes with um, a boiler. So why don't we talk a little bit about the next step and that is some of the support equipment. Okay, you got the, a feed tank or a DA tank, depending on your application. Here we have a regular condensate tank and we've got a chemical pump here that's feeding chemical into the system. You always check that every day to make sure that one, you've got a ample amount of chemical and that you haven't got any leaks and the pump is actually pumping. Okay. Then on top of that, you have a, this tank is also heated. You heat the water up so that the boiler doesn't have to work so hard so that you don't shock the boiler. Mm -hmm. So there's a temperature gauge on here and a heater that's feeding steam into the tank. So you always want to check that to make sure your heater is working properly. You're not shocking your, damaging your boiler from cold water. Right, okay. Then you can have water softeners and other chemical feed tanks. You have to check the salt every day to make sure that you got salt in your softeners to make sure all those things are working properly like they're supposed to be. Okay, so real important to just check the salt levels. Right, salt is what cleans the softener out so that it can do its job. Okay. 
All right, well now we're going into water quality, which we know is something that's extremely important and a lot of folks really don't take care of. So, um, right. you know, talk a little bit about the water quality and, and actually how we even know that the quality is good. What do, we, what do we do? Well, you have to take samples every day to make sure that, that your water coming in is good and that what you're doing with your chemical and your blowdown is working. Mm -hmm. So first you take a sample of your, of your makeup water, whether it's soft water, city water, or what it is, to see that it's maintaining where you thought it was so that you know what, that your chemical program is gonna work. Okay. Because your chemical program is set up depending on what this water is. Which is different in every area because of the hardness of the water. Because of the hardness of the water, and whether you're on a softer or you're on deionized water, what kind of water supply you have. Okay. Then you're gonna to have to take a sample of your tank to see, because you've got condensate coming back, which is distilled water, so you don't have any solids in it, but you're making up water, so you've got a mixture. So you have to take a sample of that down here to see okay. what your water is, see how much chemical you need to add. Okay, all right. And then you take a sample of your boiler water. Okay. You can take it. You'll have a sample port set up on the boiler someplace. This one is on the sight glass. You would take it right after you did your blow down because that way you've got fresh water in it. Mm. So you can take your sample to see if your chemical program is working in the boiler and your blow down program is working properly. Okay. Well, appreciate Mike stopping by and talking to us a little bit about the daily boiler maintenance. You know, boiler equipment failures, they can be dangerous and they typically result in lost productivity and revenue. Scaling a boiler on the water side will cause overheating and thus result in boiler failure. When this occurs, sometimes there can be catastrophic failures that result in a water side or a fire side explosions. This has more serious consequences, as including actually injuries or maybe even death and possible facility damage. With the right preventative maintenance plan, these issues can be avoided or greatly reduced. We appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you don't mind, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you love our videos, Please share them, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.